welcome to another episode of The Defenders on Sunset TV. And in this episode, we are looking at a futuristic subject. The subject is about the use of artificial intelligence to enhance military operations and give our forces the much needed edge on the battlefield, considering many countries and our adversary, particularly China, using AI extensively to achieve their military objectives. And we have, as always, two very well-informed experts. We have with us Lieutenant General Sudhir Sharma, who has had a distinguished military career, culminating as the Quartermaster General, but before that commanded India's largest field formation, 16 Corps, and has post-retirement been lecturing and writing on artificial intelligence. And we have Lieutenant General Sabarwal with us, who is a techno expert to the extent that he was signal officer in chief of the Indian Army and has deep understanding of the use of telecommunications signals and the use of technology to further intelligence gathering and intelligence and operations. He was also commandant of the Military College of Telecommunications and Engineering in Mao and will bring great depth to the subject and its understanding. So, Jal Sharma, sir, the first question is for you. AI as we understand, or artificial intelligence, is basically the simulation of human intelligence activities through machines and mechanics. And it is programmed in such a way to enhance operations. Now, you having had extensive operational experience and even commanded a unit in war in Sri Lanka, how is the battlefield environment changing now with AI? Is it that it's going to really give an edge to the fighting capabilities of our army or it is just an add-on? Let me give you one example. In Northern Command and Western Command, the two commands which will see and have been seeing a fair amount of military deployment, AI seems to be the really go-to subject now because if you look at how intelligence gathering is done vis-a-vis -vis China or Pakistan on the LAC LOC as well as I'm told the army is even looking at AI to monitor social media messaging and activities. Could you enlighten us? Yeah, uh, thank you Maruf. Uh, firstly, a very f fascinating subject I think. Now you see that in the future wars, I think uh, Technology is going to be playing a dominant role. In fact, it's going to be the role being played and people who don't able to master technology will mm. uh, possibly lose the war. Mm. And uh, what is going to happen in the next war is that the decision making cycle mm. is going to reduce even further in time. And the mass of data, mm. which is going to be there because of the large number of sensors, mm. is going to increase manifold. So we have a problem wherein you're getting a information overload, your decision making time is reducing, and yet you've got to make very critical decisions for the success of the operations. So unless you have augmented intelligence and you have some source where it can build it up. And AI is the only reason, uh, way where we can increase our capability to do so. So the first point to answer is yes, AI is going to play a crucial role in decision making in the battlefield and therefore we need to harness it properly. In as far as the borders are concerned, where you said, how is it going to impact the battlefield? You know, we've got a large borders with China and with Pakistan, and they are in the most difficult terrains of the world, you know. Mm. And unless we're able to carry out a very deep surveillance on them, we'll be left blinded. And when I mean surveillance, I don't mean close surveillance. We need deeper and fairly deep surveillance. And for that, we'll need to need raw technologies, whether they're airborne, ground, sensors, underwater. And all these sensors will then need to be fed into some kind of a place where we can analyze the data. And for that, we will need artificial intelligence in a big way to be able to supplement what the human beings can do. So to answer your question in a short answer, in the future war, military leaders will need the assistance of AI to augment the intelligence they've got and we need AI to mimic the human brain to some extent. The judgment will still be ours, but it will be a very essential component of winning the next war. True. Uh, I think that realization has begun to dawn on military headquarters and even our political leadership, that there is no getting away from it. And General Sabarwal, uh, do explain to us 
that your institution, MCTE, Military College of Telecommunications and Engineering, which is the top institution of the Army for all these kind of technologies which enhance our ability to gather information, listening, examining the trends in technology, cyber warfare. I believe they are doing extensive in-house testing for various AI-powered smart surveillance systems for Northern and Western Command. I'm still sticking to Northern and Western Command. I'll, and that will apply to other commands like Eastern Command and elsewhere, where the same China that we face across the LAC, we also face across the McBay Online. But your institution is doing a fair amount of research work on that. What do you think uh, are the areas they're focusing on? Let me start by saying that Military College of Telecommunication Engineering is a premier institution of the Indian Army, which deals not only with the core technology, imparting core technology to the Indian Army officers in terms of imparting, giving them diploma, giving them B.Tech, giving them M.Tech, etc. But more importantly, they are involved in finding the operational end state by exploiting technology. And towards that end, we had a laboratory for robotics earlier, which we have now expanded it to artificial intelligence and robotics. We have interacted with most of the formation quarters, specifically the northern and eastern uh, commands, uh, as you mentioned. And now we are running the use cases and trying to find out how exactly artificial intelligence, what Janal Sharma also brought out, how it can augment a decision maker mm. in improving his decision, in improving his battle worthiness mm. by utilizing artificial intelligence on each of these use cases. Mm. Now the use cases could be for command and control, for surveillance, for intelligence, for logistic, for supporting mm. system, for health services, for wherever. Mm. So lots of use cases have been taken on by the Military College of Telecommunication Engineering and each of use cases is being utilized along with the artificial intelligence and we are doing more research on this particular thing. We have also gone in for collaboration with uh, IIT Madras in this particular case. We are also getting some funding from the Army headquarters in this regard, from the ATRAC also. The number of seminars which are being held, number of people which are being trained on this particular artificial intelligence. So all in all, AI today is something like what electricity was there earlier. In every walk of life, you, you know, 100 years back, we started building electricity. Yeah. About 30 years back, we brought in digitization or automation for everything. Similarly, today, AI in every walk of life is being important. And therefore, it's very important that the Indian Army officers, Jawan JCOs, are also important training on artificial intelligence by every way. And MCT, on their part, is leading the way and is the center of excellence today for artificial intelligence in the Indian Army. Jal, sir, uh, j very well put. Uh, Jal, uh, Sharma, sir, you know, there is a question that I'm myself having a bit of a debate in my mind about. And that is that on one side, technology is essential, as Jan Sabarwal has brought out in the context of AI for battle fighting. On the other side, the real uh, sort of cutting edge of the sword for the Indian Army still is the soldier and the Jawan JCO element. And the fighting units have Jawan JCOs who are certainly more aware than the earlier generation of soldiers and their ilk, but certainly not able to keep pace with the rapid developments in technology. So do you think we are expecting or giving them an overdose of technology to get them to perform e effectively? And when they don't, there will be frustration at levels of command. Why are we not getting the inputs now that this technology has been provided? Uh, Maruf, a uh, very interesting question, but my first answer to that is that I don't think there can ever be an overdose of technology if you want to win the next war. To that extent, I think uh, Indian Army has been done very carefully how to slowly put technology down the chain, you know, right up to the infantry soldier, by firstly giving hold of smart weapons, you know, smart surveillance systems, uh, the binoculars, the night vision devices, the systems that are coming down to the infantry are all smart weapons, built in AI technology within them, so that they get distilled information coming out of them. That's one part. Second, as you've seen lately, India's uh, recruitment policy has changed. And today, rather than getting the soldier which you get from the village class 4th and 5th, now it's gone up to class 12. Mm -hmm. So you'll find that very educated soldiers are coming into the armed forces and going right into the infantry. Mm -hmm. And therefore, a lot of awareness has come into that. And I find today, when I interact with young soldiers, mm -hmm. they're very aware and very alert. So that's a good thing. So therefore, 
they're able to imbibe this technology. In fact, the young people are more keen to pick up technology than we used to be in our time. And therefore, there's a good happiness, a healthy blend going on in the army. But I see your point and see more is needed to be done. More can be done, more should be done. But overdose, no. They are picking up this technology and we're slowly building into it. And there's a need to carry on doing that, train them, bring them up so that they become the soldier at the end who can fight it. He'll be gained decisions by his commanding officers using artificial intelligence. But his smart weapons will help him fight the war and win the next war very well. I think that's the good I, I'll come to you with how much more can we really do within the constraints of our budget. But that will be the next question to you, General Sabarwat. Now, there has been, based on a recommendation made by the chairman um, of, I think, the Tata Group, that has said that we must have a defense AI council with the Raksha Mantri at the head of it, as well as the three service chiefs, the defense secretary, secretary defense production, chief of DRDO, etc. At the same time, there will be a defense AI project agency which will be headed by the defense secretary. So, how much can we expect from this top leadership which has so many things on their plate and for them to take a decision on these technologies considering they, like many of us, are products of a generation which was not so technology savvy. And suddenly these decisions lie with them that whether we can go ahead or not. Considering that I would say a very nominal budget of 100 crore has been given for such an exercise. So is that enough? Because if you're looking at buying aircrafts worth 100,000 crores, then 100 crores for something which can be a game changer also, is it too less? Okay, let me put things of uh, this council, etc. in correct perspective. Sometime in 2018, China came out with their AI strategy and they said that by 2030, we will be the leading AI power in the world. Seeing them, US also came out in 2018, USSR also came out in 2018. Mm -hmm. In 2018, Niti Aayog came out with, this, at the national level, there was an AI council formed with all the ministries. Surprisingly, members from defense were left out, but other ministries were there and some kind of strategy was evolved. Based on that, the def Defense AI Council was formed on their own with Raksha Mantri as the head, the three chiefs and several other guys uh, who were part, part of this. Defense, uh, Art Defense Artificial Intelligence Procurement Agency was formed under Secretary DP. And there were other members of, you know, like uh, uh, Deputy Chief PNS, etc., etc., were all members of this particular thing. Mm -hmm. And it was decided that 100 crore per year will be allocated to each service. Now, if the technology is disruptive and it, we have taken a decision and the world over, all armies have taken a decision that AI shall be infused into our everything, the first and foremost thing is to come out with an AI strategy or an AI doctrine. Now, AI strategy and AI doctrine, unless that is in place at the national level or at the tri services level or at the armed forces level, there is no way it can be, you know, dissipated or practiced or exploited at the lower ends. So, therefore, at the top end, to start with, I think 100 crores is enough. I don't think we have been able to, the three services have been, have been able to expand 100 crore till now. Though, lately, there has been a lot of traction on this. So, coming here onwards, the way you had mentioned that, uh, the Raksha Mantri had, uh, you know, recently on 11th July, he had uh, conducted an AI symposium where he had said that there are 75 projects hereby are uh, particularly announced. And if you see the traction which is going on in this particular field, you will realize that 100 crore might become less. Government probably would uh, allocate more on that. So, there is no issue on this particular. Okay. Okay. So, I will come to you after Jal Sharma again on those 75 items. Okay. But uh, Jal Sharma, sir. General Sabarwal mentioned about China and China is the big elephant in the room every time we have discussions on anything from South China Sea to the LAC. Now from Taiwan to artificial intelligence is all over the place and China is not putting the brakes on. It is not embarrassed. It is not slowing down. I mean compared to the 100 crores that we have set out to spend, China as General Sabarwal had brought out that had made very clear 
that they will spend extensively. I believe they are spending more than almost anybody else in the world on AI related <laughs> activities. Something in the tune of $1.5 billion is what they are putting into R&D of AI related activity. And China is therefore using AI in a lot of operational platforms, UAEs, UAVs on the South China Sea. China is also looking at exporting artificial intelligence related items to Pakistan and some Middle East countries. China is also moving with AI related initiatives into space. So should we be competing with China or should we first get our act together with an AI doctrine that would apply to all of us and then speed up because anything you see we are 10 to 20 years behind China in a number of initiatives. So are we willing to settle for second position or are we willing to stand up and say we don't want to dominate the world. We want to provide security to the Indian landmass and our objectives therein. Uh, Maruf, uh, let me start by saying that firstly, China, the elephant in the room, China has got multifarious problems, you know. China at the moment is competing with the uh, US, which is a technological giant. And therefore, they are creating all the infrastructure, all the AI related weapons in the South China Sea and Taiwan, basically to counter America and the Quad. Unfortunately, it's a dual use technology. You know, what you develop for the US, what you develop for your sea can also be used against India. To that extent, it's a big threat to us because they're spending all that money is not directed specifically towards India, but towards dealing with the US threat. Okay. But that can still transfer itself when it comes to the Indian forces. Now, the point is, should we compete with China? The answer is yes. We have reached the level of maturity as a nation that we must not stand up and be counted against China. We should have the technological backbone to be able to take them on because I think we have the infrastructure in place and with all the councils coming in, we may be running a little behind time, but I think time has come for Indian scientists to be able to create for the Indian Defence Forces the kind of backup AI that can take on China and be able to handle it. It may take us a few years, more budget may be allowed to be done so, but we should do so. But coming to the second part, yes, India has always announced that it is only protecting its own landmass. It has got no territorial uh, you know, ambitions outside its borders, which is true. But yes. it's, its own continental landmass is so big, its sea frontiers are so large, that it needs a large force to deal with it. And therefore, AI will become an integral component. We must rise to it and we must be able to compete with China in the next 5-10 years. Otherwise, it's a losing opposition. We cannot afford to lose the war. And with that, it means that we will have to put everything we got into it if we want to defend our sovereignty and be strong with China. Unfortunately, we live in this difficult area, our boundaries are such, and we'll have to guard against them and fight them. So, answer is, yes, we should stand up to China, we should compete with them, we should come up to them sooner than later. Okay, well put, sir. And, and the fact that, uh, you know, if we focus on protecting our landmass itself, will give us both the capability and the resources to play a bigger role should the need arise, as you put it. Jal Sabarwal. Uh, you talked about the 75 items listed out by the Raksha Mantri in the kind of new initiatives in AI uh, that will really be required. And these include cyber security, human behavior, intelligence monitoring system, supply chain management, voice analysis, C4SR and what have you. Now, I want you to throw light on two, three items. One is, we all know AI and cyber security are virtually synonymous. We also know that AI is very important for intelligence gathering. Where I think the areas where AI is making a breakthrough, in one item I've read about called the silent sentry. It takes over the role of where two units have gaps in between and a robot will be able to monitor that part of the border also pick up some language related signaling that comes from across the border including Mandarin mm -hmm. and also provide eyes and ears to soldiers with day and night patrolling where there is a requirement for more and more forces. People are never able to comprehend how much manpower is eaten up by border management and those who have commanded troops on the border like General Sharma will be able to educate us on that. 
but since we are running out of time, we are trying to squeeze in more and more on the subject. So where is it, do you think, we will need to focus more on in the 75 technologies that Raksha Mantri has talked about in terms of dif disruptive technologies for artificial intelligence? Okay, if we want to carry out transformation through AI, then the three broad heads under which we need to carry out transformation as far as the armed forces is concerned, I am not talking about the commercial sector. First and foremost is obviously war fighting. That any manifestation of war fighting where AI can augment that our prowess of war fighting should we, we should be taking it on. Number two are support services in which logistics, health services, etc., etc. This is the second particular part. And third one are our business practices, in the sense how our army court is run, how our command headquarters is run, how our core headquarters is run, etc., etc. So this can also be improved through artificial intelligence. So under three, these three broad head, whatever else is fitting into this, we should do it. You mentioned about the silent sentry. I would say use cases like this, basically where soldiers are fighting something which is very dull, something which is very dirty, and something which is very dangerous. These tasks are today best awarded to be done by the soldiers and given to artificial intelligence or robots or anything where AI can help us doing in particular doing. For example, silent sentry which you mentioned is a kind of a job which is dangerous where why do you want to expose your manpower doing it? Where a silent sentry can do all the tasks and more than what a normal soldier can do. Similarly, let me give you an example of, let's take, I was reading in some uh, magazine yesterday. US has 11,000 uh, drones flying all across the world. One drone gives you an output of three seasons of National Football League of high definition per day. Now you can imagine that much into 11,000 which is being dumped on a desk of a particular guy on a daily for him to analyze. There's obviously, humanly he cannot analyze. So it's a very dull and tedious kind of thing where uh, the AI enabled algorithm probably will do it real time without any latency and give you a decision straight away or give you some, throw up something like this. So these kind of tasks can be done by AI. Now these 75 tasks which Raksha Mantri had inaugurated and if you heard the speech of Secretary of Defense, he said there are 100 more in the pipeline. These are all tasks which can be grouped under those three headings. Some are under war fighting, some are under the support services and some are under the business practices. As in where, as more awareness comes in into Indian Army, as the soldiers, what he mentioned, how they will get trained on AI, etc., more number of use cases would emerge. The more use cases emerge, these will go to the industry for them to develop the AI algorithms for us. Okay. So, so very well put. In fact, I wish you in your capacity as a senior research scholar with clause now, will start putting together more papers and create yeah. an energy for uh, inter-service cooperation and service and industry cooperation in AI-related activity because this is an area I don't think enough has been written about and talked about. Anjali Sharma, last quick question to you. As Quartermaster General, you would have dealt with the logistics of the entire Indian Army. It's a, it's a huge uh, call on your table. But uh, how does AI help with logistic and supply chain management for the armed forces, uh, accounting for so many heads under which things, products are acquired and passed on to the man on the front? Maru, firstly, I like me to state by saying that AI should become the core function of the armed forces, you know. It should become at the center of what they do. It should not be peripheral, you know, you take on a few things, do AI, you take a few things, you do AI, no. It should start from the center and then should spread out tentacles outwards. That way it gets very integrated. Now coming to supply chain and logistics, you are aware that India has been importing stuff from all over the world and therefore we are the largest inventories in the world, you know. We got thousands of weapon systems, we got thousands of ammunition, lubricant, fuels, oils and the terrain and borders such. Giving this products from the central depots in India or from places, taking them to the borders is a very, very difficult task and requires a great amount of management. And unless you put in some artificial intelligence into the purpose, we will not make sure that the right ammunition, which is the right unit at the right time because there are so many things to be done. And because of the overload of this data, sometimes there are glitches taking place. I am happy to state that 
there is a system by which you now ai has been integrated into some of the decision making process so we can track each and every item of you know which is required for war fighting going to different parts of the border through this ai management system so that the right product reaches right prime so the answer is that in the future battlefield logistics and supply chain management ai will become a core function because it is something which will be required because the amount of data points which will be required to feed information up front will be enormous and ai will help all the logistic officers to be able to make sure that troops are well supplied up front and they get the right thing at the right time and do that so that's well, going to be core thank function. you very much sir. i'm you know uh, lots of points have come out very comprehensively put and i'm glad all of us are of the same view that there is no getting away from ai in battlefield management operational preparedness logistics management and even signaling to our adversaries we are up to taking on the challenge of guarding and safeguarding india's frontiers thank you very much for your views and i hope you can put across more of your views in writing so that more and more people learn from it because beyond the television show people need the substance in writing to understand more which both of you i'm sure can enlighten us and the country on that and thanks for watching until our next episode goodbye